Yes, can you hear us? Awesome. So, um, Velda. Yes. And me are going to present uh, our lightning talks, the lightning talks uh, today, and we're going to start with announcements, with the conference announcements. So, go. Great. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are from Python, Spain. I hope you are enjoying this conference. We have the same feeling, the same experience this year in Spain, in Vigo. So please come here. This is the schedule. Take a picture of it. It's quite important. There are still tickets open, so please buy them before they run out. Four, five, six of October. Lots of talks, parallel tracks, conferences, networking, lots of activities. So if you're enjoying this experience, I can assure you that in Spain, you're going to have exactly the same reward as here. So here you have the organizers, Python Vigo, Python Spain. We are working on together on bringing this event up to make it the best event to all of you. So here you have the links. Please come to Spain. You're going to really enjoy it. Vigo is a beautiful place to be and to visit. So come here. Hello everyone, my name is Ignacio. I'm also from Spain, from the Galician region. Uh, Galicia is a region located northwest of Spain. It's actually pretty small, but we had a lot of people and our own culture and a lot of um, food. As they already said, uh, PyCon is coming to, Spain, uh, to Galicia, specifically to Vigo. But I want to talk about the Python Coruña community, which is in the north from Vigo. Uh, it's actually a pretty good community. They organize talks and workshops every month. Uh, if you're into that and you want uh, you want to walk throughout Spain and meet people uh, interested in Python, the Martin and Roberto, which run this community, are amazing people, and they're gonna hook you up with whatever activity they're going around. If you're also related, uh, interested in other tech events, we have Sys Army for social events, Coruña What the Fuck for talks about any technology, and Coruña Events. It's a website where you can check all of this stuff that's going on within Galicia. Thank you very much. Hello. So um, yeah, uh, I think uh, all of, like it's very easy to go to Spain. So I'm going to challenge you to go to a little bit further away to uh, Indonesia. So it's in October. It's at the end of October. So you can go to PyCon Spain and then fly to Indonesia. It's not that far away. Um, <laughs> so and also maybe you can consider having like uh, you know after going to uh, this amazing place. Uh, I can't pronounce the name of this place, but it's uh, yeah, and then you can go to Bali. Who doesn't want to go to Bali? So um, yeah, PyCon APEC 2024 um, are welcoming you. Also, I, I know that they have a beginner's day. So if you're begin, like just start starting a Python journey, you can like you know have your holiday and learn more Python going there. So why not? Um, next, uh, so maybe uh, you would also consider going to an even further away place. It's like PyCon Hong Kong. Um, so the conference day is 14th of November. And um, uh, I think the CFP, they have just closed it uh, early this year. They, they are reviewing it, and then uh, the lineup will be announced soon. And the food in Hong Kong is amazing. If you want recommendation, I can tell you, because I grew up there. Um, another one, uh, as, you, as you can tell from my uh, thick French accent, that uh, I'm actually living in Paris, which is not true. I'm living in London, so sorry about that. But um, yeah, but I'm going to buy Data Paris. Uh, it's in this amazing building. It's actually a science museum. So uh, last year, I, uh, you know, JupiterCon is there at the same venue. Their um, uh, reception drink was amazing. I have canopy that's like, you know, growing from a tree. Don't ask me why. It's uh, just like people come here with the plant and then hand me something to eat, and then I eat it. It's amazing. It's 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 not fruit. It's I don't know. Like French cuisine is crazy. Um, so, um, but this time you can also go there. This to this amazing venue. Have some good, you know, French cuisine and um, you know, and hang out with uh, cool data people. So um, I think that's it. Thanks. Hello, hello. So I'm here with all the crew from Back in Italy. You can recognize from this T-shirt. Uh, we, we are about to announce no conference for 2024, but 2025, so next year. Uh, Back in Italy has been in Florence this year. It's what are you saying? It's in Bologna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, four days from 28 to 13th 
of May, and uh, six tracks, uh, and one day of dedicated to workshops, uh, and uh, yeah, six tracks of talks, uh, and plus two tracks of other workshops. Uh, we are already looking for sponsors, uh, and uh, we have a pool. Uh, actually, the, the food is amazing, of course. <laughs> and if you want to learn how to use this properly in Italian, yeah, you should come. the video are online. There is a beautiful tutorial uh, on the opening session of uh, PyCon Italia 2024. So see ya. Okay. And we do a lot of selfie in PyCon Italia. So <laughs> let's start. Yeah. Say hi. Ow. The other one. Yes. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, bye. Ahoy um, všichni, and uh, hi everyone. So I would like to actually announce Relax and the coziness party uh, with coffee in uh, um, late autumn times. And what party would it be without such a lovely crowd from Europe Python? But wait, who is this? It's actually PyCon Sweden. <laughs> so I would really like to invite you to this um, from 14th to 15th of November, and um, we have a call for proposals open and tickets, so please join us, and uh, yeah. Imagine there was a place where you could talk to Python people, and it looks like this. In a uh, town that gives you nice aerial shots like this. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? And the best thing is, there's only a bit of Germany in between you and that conference. Uh, it will be in Rapperswil in Switzerland, a couple of hundred kilometers from here, so there is no reason to not be there, really. <laughs> if you've never heard of Rapperswil, um, that happens. It's the eastern end of the Zurich Lake. So one end is Zurich, the other end is Rapperswil. It's easily reachable from Zurich by train. Also quite a nice route as well. Um, it will be on October 17th, 18th, so about three months from now, um, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Whatever, October. Um, one day general Python topics, one day data science, there will be early bird tickets available until the end of July, and it's right next to the lake. You can actually walk over that wooden bridge to the other side of the lake, or you might be able to take a swim depending on temperatures and temperature preferences, I suppose. <laughs> PythonSummit.ch for more. That's all I have. Thank you. Tough luck, Florian, because you're all going to be at PyCon Portugal. And instead of telling you what's so great about Portugal, I thought I would tell you why the PyCon at Portugal is called PyCon Portugal. So it's really an acronym for practically the only regional Python conference you got to attend in your life. <laughs> Thank you. I made this on my own. It wasn't an LLM. I made this on my own. And it's going to happen more or less, more or less there in the red dots. And this is the website. Just take a picture and I'll see you there. Cheers. Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. I'm introduced to you, uh, PyCon Taiwan. And this Taiwan location is in Asia. And we are, uh, have to, uh, we, we are an annual uh, conference for Python. We have uh, we have uh, run uh, 12 years, and in past few years, we, uh, we, we try a lot of uh, interesting uh, events. For example, we have a podcast uh, and other uh, remote virtual conference venue. And this is our keynote speaker for this year. Uh, they are very, very uh, brilliant. And this year's PyCon Taiwan We'll hold. Uh, we'll be hold on uh, uh, in September 24, uh, 20, 21 to 22 in Kaohsiung of Taiwan, and 
uh, in Taiwan, we have a lot of delicious food <laughs> and uh, many uh, beautiful sights to uh, can, can see. And welcome to Taiwan to join us. Um, I would like to invite you to EuroSciPy. So if you're in Python and science and in Europe, you have to go to EuroSciPy. This year, we will be the first time in Poland, in Szczecin. It's a bit difficult to pronounce, but a very nice place to be. So you, you can register, and if you want to reach out to the scientific Python community, you can become a sponsor. We do have two, day, two days of tutorials. We have talks, very nice talks, and we have sprints. And you can meet a lot of maintainers of scientific Python libraries in person, and you might even be able to attend a tutorial with one of the maintainers who wrote Pandas or NumPy or Matplotlib. So please come to Poland and join your SciPy. Well, I would like to uh, announce the first edition of PyCon NL this year. It will take place on the 10th of October. Uh, we are actually still looking for speakers. The CFP is still open, so you can definitely still send in your proposal. Uh, and there's one more thing that I'd like to add. I, I've been speaking to people about organizing PyCon NL for years and years now. And nothing ever came of it, so we decided to just be a little bit cheeky and organize one. Uh, but I know that there are still a lot of people out there who, who would like to be involved, uh, who have ideas for PyCon NL. So definitely get in touch so we can see how we can uh, grow the, the conference, make it even bigger next year, and make it a true a nationwide community event that's open for everyone from, from around the world. So that's PyCon NL. Please get in touch. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Jose. I, I am one of the co-organizers of PyLadiesCon, and maybe you are familiar with it or not, but for that reason I am here. Uh, the last year was our first version. It's a conference that tried to put together all the PyLadies uh, chapters and knowledge. And the thing is that uh, is a conference that is a bit different. It's an online, it's online version. We are um, eager to have multiple languages. Uh, we are gonna have workshop, talk, keynotes. It's, uh, it's uh, 24 hours uh, or 48 hours in, in a row. And of course, we are gonna also offer mentoring uh, activities and different uh, help to our participants. Of course, if you are lead of, uh, of some of the pilot chapter, probably you're gonna receive some emails from us uh, asking for support or contributions or, or whatever. Um, for sure, uh, here is our website. It's a free conference and we are looking for you to join us. And of course, the call for proposal will be open very soon. I hope to see a lot of your proposals there. Thank you very much. <laughs> This was the correct one. So hello, my name is Grete. Quickly, I wanted to see how many of you have been in Estonia. Nice. But still quite few, which is the very good reason why to join PyCon Estonia. And so all of the rest of the PyCons is also a very interesting conference to learn more. We have a lot of AI stuff. We have a lot of machine learning stuff. Of course, data is not missing uh, from our conference as well. You can see uh, two of the keynotes uh, faces in here as well. And especially for you, my friends, there is a 50% uh, 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 how is the word uh, discount code uh, for you as well. So come to Estonia. We are famous for uh, having TMO startups per capita. Uh, we also have e-residency. I don't believe anyone else has that. So uh, we are a cool digital country. We are small but nice <laughs> under Finland uh, and up to Latvia, from both of which do not have any PyCons. So come join us. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Sukanya and uh, I have two announcements. One is Spike on Ireland. CFP is open, it's happening on 16th of November uh, at the Radisson Blue Hotel. This time it's a one-day conference and on the 17th we'll have a full-day workshop. 
um, the CFP link, and, and also we are looking for sponsors, if anyone is interested, so the sponsor link is also there. And uh, do submit for talks and workshops as well. The second announcement is for PyCon India. Uh, it's happening on the 28th uh, to 23rd September. So 28th would be uh, Dev Sprint. 21st and 22nd is the main conference, and 23rd is the workshop. Um, and uh, again, these are the links. Unfortunately, the CFP has been closed, but uh, the uh, birds of feather and poster sessions are open. So again, um, if you can take a screenshot. Thank you. Hi everyone, I don't have slides, so you're just gonna to have to use your imaginations, okay. So forests, beaches, mountains, great wine, great wine. Um, there are two conferences that I wanna tell you about. They're both in Africa. The one is PyCon Africa, and that's gonna rock. It's in September. The other one is PyCon South Africa, which is a little south, and that's in Cape Town, great tourist destination. Um, they're both gonna be fantastic. It would be lovely to see some of you there. Awesome, that was a lot. And you should try to attend most of them. So don't just clap and be like, woo, and then not attend the conferences. Please, they worked so hard to come up here and tell you about it. Please attend the conferences. So, our, we're gonna have our lightning talks now. The very pressurized demos and slide presentation there is in conferences where your skills are, are really tested on how fast you can speak and if your slides work or not. So that is what we're getting into. And our first speaker is Moises. I hope I didn't, Hello. yeah, I, I didn't murder your names too much, so that's cool. So fun fact about him is in 2018, he he was supposed to have a lightning talk, but then time was up before he could present. And well, that, that was a bummer, but you know, it happens. It has happened to most of us or none of us if you cannot relate at the moment. But yeah, and he spent the whole of 2018 preparing for a lightning talk that was presented in 2019. That is high level commitment. So today he's going to share about what to expect at the social event. So give it up for Moises. Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, if you were here last year, maybe you remember um, I was trying to set up everything. So today I prepared beforehand. We have audio selected. We have the correct speed. We have Super Collider running. So, but we're going to talk about the social event. Social event is happening today. Uh, is happening at the same venue where PyCon CZ happened last year. It's a very nice place. We will have board games. We will have music jam, bring your own instruments. We will have some electronic music that I will give you some um, sample of it in a bit. We probably still have tickets, I believe. It's today, um, everything you can find in the conference website and food, we will have um, all the dietary options, I believe. Okay, so a little bit of sample of what we're gonna have today. This is Super Collider, is a music synthesizer and I don't like to code in its language, I prefer Python. So there's this cool thing called Foxdot where you can have a petrol and run it. Now we have code. I'll make it bigger. So this is gonna be fast. I'll just give you a brief um, explanation. You can just execute uh, blocks of code. You can define functions. You can define variables that they loop over time. So these variables, for example, they have the value minus two, zero, two, four, every two beats, because this is about music. And we should have something like this. And so what you're hearing is 
this instrument deb, I assigned it to the B1 player and for a duration of two beats. So every two beats, it will kick again. There's a chopping effect. There's a mod effect, which I can change. And this is the volume. So one is full volume. So this is a fraction of one, basically. If I put it like this, it's very soft. Then we can also have other instruments. There's just not one. There's this one that combines lots of samples. And then you can keep adding more instruments. You can keep changing the functions to play different things. So now I change from just playing the note zero. Now I'm using my variable and you can see that it's going through four different notes. And as I was saying, you can stack multiple instruments. You can group instruments, so you can control like multiple instruments at the same time. You can change notes inside each temple. And there's this decorator, which I like a lot. You can decorate a function for it to execute in the next uh, beat of the song. Otherwise, when I execute it like this, it's just immediately. But here I'm scheduling it to execute in the next beat. So basically you can have your setup prepared beforehand. This is mostly used in events called Algorave, where you're just like coding and making music on the spot. You can change over time. Don't have to play the same thing all over and over. And now we are approaching to the end. Thank you. Thank you, voices. That was nice. That was nice. Nice, good beats. Grooving. Ooh. Hey. Thank you. So the people who were here yesterday during the lightning talks, uh, they, they probably saw Mark's lightning talk, and there was, they noticed an uh, important ingredient was missing. You probably know it. Tractor jokes. So I'm going to tell a tractor joke now. <laughs> what does an alien use to harvest their crops? Tractor beans. <laughs> Snap. OK, our next, next uh, speaker. Uh, is going to tell us how we can beat an LLM in a pub quiz, right? Am I correct? Exactly, yes. Got it. Mm. Should I do something? Mm, apparently, I need to. Oh, where is my cursor? Yes. Yes. This place? Look at me. Look at me. Look over there. Oh, yeah. This place? And then the, you go to this one? Maybe, maybe not. No, no. You push on the big one? This one? Yeah. And then you go to the left one. It says extended. It says, no, not the bottom. Yes. Mm -hmm. No mirror. Oh yeah, all right, sorry, yeah. All right, so um, today I'm going to showcase you a very cool demo called AutoQuizzer and we'll try to beat an LLM in a pub quiz. So keep that in mind, it, it might be useful for the social event this evening. 
Now I need to go back because it doesn't change my slide. All right, go. Yeah, okay. My name is Bilge. I work as a devil engineer at DeepSet, and it's the company behind the open source LLM framework Haystack. Um, I come from Istanbul, Turkey, and it's, if you haven't been there, it's alongside of its history and like the cuisine and the beautiful weather and view. It's also famous for its cats, so you can pet them if you go there. Just keep that in mind. Let's go back to AutoQuizzer. It's a quiz generator app application. So you just basically give it a URL and it generates a quiz. It's a multiple choice quiz, so it's not exactly like a pop quiz. Either you play or you let the LLM play or both. Like it's basically your choice. And in terms of architecture, it uses the Lemma 3 8B instruct model and it uses it through Grok. And to bring all the moving parts together, like the LLM inference, like generating the prompt, generating the quiz and stuff like that. It uses Haystack. And for the UI, it uses Gradio. But let's see now how it works. So if you go to the demo application, it's hosted on Hugging Face Spaces, you will see that one. We already provide you some URLs, uh, but today I like to use the Py EuroPythons uh, website and we'll generate a quiz from that URL. So let's give it a go. All right. All right. Now we have our quiz and let's try to answer those questions together. Okay. When does the conference start? A, B, C, D. A, yeah. Okay. What type of events are held on Monday and Tuesday? Cool. Okay, what is unique about EuroPython? It's the youngest Python conference, it's the oldest and longest running volunteer at Python conference, it's the most expensive one, or is the smallest? B, cool. And what is the conference held, what is the conference, okay, this, is it a valid English language? I don't know. But A, B, C, D? Cool, okay. What is the purpose of sprints on Saturday and Sunday? A, B, C, D? All right, all right, let's submit our answers and see how we did. Okay, our score is 100, cool. Um, so basically the LLM cannot beat us, but let's give it a shot. So if we click this button, it will take us to this page. So we have, this, we have two options here. Either we just use Lemma 3's own training data set, so it just answers those questions from its training data, and let's try to give it a go. All right, it just answered only the three questions, right? And if you click that drop down, you'll see like, for example, it found the conference start date wrong, or, and there's another like wrong answer here, because it used its own training data, that's okay. But there's also another option, it can also do web rack, so it goes through Google and like tries to find answers to those questions on web, and let's give it a go. It takes some time, because it also goes through web, like, okay, again, <laughs> Uh, but it makes sense, it makes sense because it goes to Google and asks like when does the conference start? Like what do you get? Which conference? Like Google has no idea. Like, okay. Uh, but here it's, it's nice, you see like the resources and like why it concluded with that answer. Yeah. So thank you and this QR code will take you to the... This QR code will take you to the uh, application, and um, I also have a poster up there in the exhibit hall, so if you have any questions about RAG and how to build RAG applications, I'm here, and you can also find me on social media. Thank you. Woo, that was nice. So our next speaker is going to actually demo a special beta version for EuroPython, which is a crawler for Python. Are you ready? Yes, I am. You were born ready. <laughs> yep. Okay, nice. Awesome. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so. Hi everyone, are you excited for these socials, uh, social events tonight? Yes. yes, yes, so clap a little bit, <laughs> just cheer up, are you awake? <laughs> so, hello everyone, I'm Saurav and I'm from open source tooling team of uh, Appify and we build uh, open source tools 
and libraries for web scraping developers. And today I'm going to showcase you one of the libraries which we specially built before EuroPython and we did a special beta release just before the conference. And so, yeah, so just for context, Crawly is a uh, web scraping and browser automation library which was only in JavaScript the day before yesterday. But we did uh, hard work for like six months and we launched the whole library in Python and uh, it's a beta version and it, it's launched for, especially for EuroPython. So since the launch we are trending everywhere and <laughs> why Crawly? So, Crawly uh, has a unified interface for HTTP and headless browser crawling. So we support a beautiful soup crawler for HTTP crawling and the play, uh, Playwright crawler for uh, headless browser crawling. Apart from that, uh, we have automatic parallel crawling as well as automatic retries when you, uh, when you have some error or you are getting blocked. And the most uh, important part is like we support proxy rotation uh, and session management in there. So proxies, proxies get automatically uh, rotated when you are using Crawly. So why we are, uh, we are part of EuroPython this year and this is our first time. And the, uh, why we are here is because we are looking for early adopters. So we want you to use our open source library, give us feedback about it and uh, get involved, make a pull request and uh, be part of uh, success of uh, web scraping libraries and tools. So if you can scan us and like uh, visit the library, give, some, give us some feedback, it will be very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next speaker is Hugo, and the, he's going to tell us if Python should adopt Calver. Yes. <laughs> done, I'm done. Uh, yeah. Mirror, I want to have, I want to have my speaker note. Okay, I see um, oh, a tough crowd again. for tractor yeah. jokes, so I'm going to try uh, Chuck Norris uh, fact. Chuck Norris can binary search unsorted data. <laughs> Bit better. Okay, hello. Um, my name is Hugh van Kemenade. I'm the release manager for Python 3.14 and the one after that. I'm proposing Python adopts calendar versioning. But first, here's the current scheme. Um, it's major.minor.micro. Major is bumped for very big changes like two to three. Uh, minor is for less big changes like 3.13, and micro is for bug fixes. But look at this. It suggests the major version is only incremented for earth-shattering changes. Let's come back to this. Semantic versioning is a popular scheme which aims to communicate the intent of a release. Uh, major bump means you make breaking API changes. Minor means you add functionality without intentional breaking changes, and patches for bug fixes. Every Python feature release like 3.9 or 3.13 can and does contain breaking changes when we remove deprecations. People often assume Python follows semantic versioning and complain about breaking changes in feature releases. But Python scheme predates Semba by at least 15 years. The Python scheme was added to source control in 1994 for the 1.0 release. If Python adopted Semba, we'd basically get a new major bump every year when we remove deprecations. Some projects have adopted another versioning scheme based on their calendar. With calendar versioning, you include some element of the date in the version number. For example, Ubuntu and Black use the year and month, PIP and PyCharm use the year. And these programming languages all use some form of the year. Since 2019, we've made a release each year. This is sort of calendar-based, it's just that it's offset by 11 years. <laughs> the, the simplest cover option would be to stick with major version three and put the year in the minor version. For example, 3.26 will be released in 2026. It makes it obvious when a release came out. Calendar versioning makes everything easier to translate into calendar time rather than counting versions and looking up when they were or will be released. Warnings for deprecations often mention the version they will be removed in. 
However, once aware of Calvert, it is immediately obvious how long you have left to take action. Right now, it's a little tricky to work out when a release is end of life. First, you have to look up when it was initially released and then add five years. But if the initial release date is right there in the version, it's much easier. I don't think there's much appetite for version four. We don't want to repeat two to three and we don't want earth-shattering changes. Perhaps 4 could be reserved for something big, like removing the gill, but the steering council made it clear the rollout must be gradual. Will we stick on version 3 forever? Another option is to put the year in the major version. <laughs> for example, 26.0 will be released in 2026. This means we can take a nice big leap over all that 4.0 baggage. Or we could also include the release month as the minor version like Ubuntu and Black. For example, 26.10 will be released in October 2026. The good news is this is a lightning talk so I don't have time to get into packaging. The, <laughs> the, the short version is that 26. something needs a bunch more work for packaging. So I've written up PEP 2026. Please have a read of it. If this goes ahead, it will start with uh, Python 3.15 changing to 3.26 in 2026. But don't worry, whatever happens, the Python 3.14 release will still be Pi. Thank you. Bringing the lightning and the lightning talks. <laughs> So our next speaker is Sebastian, who's going to talk about F-IT. I will not pronounce it because there is a COC that I need I am binded to. But yeah, do you know you're in a city where beer is cheaper than water? Did you know that? I don't know. If you're thirsty, are you going to buy water or beer now? Awesome. Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian from Numberly and today I'm going to talk to you about a very special subject. But before I do so, can I see a show of hands who has ever had a bug in production before? <laughs> That's what I thought. So I'm here to talk to you about fuck it. How to fix production bugs in five minutes. So before I go into depth about the subject, I just want you to know I am not responsible for anything you do at work. That is your responsibility, okay? So don't you hate it when you take some code, you deploy it to production, you don't check it because there's no reason to, your code is perfect. And then the compiler or some other thing just says there's a bug in your code. He's obviously wrong. So you can just use fuck it. You pip install fuck it, it takes a couple seconds, and then any function that the code tells you is wrong, you just use the fuck it decorator, and now it's no longer wrong. <laughs> and if it's still wrong, which might happen, you can chain fuck it calls. You can use the fuck it decorator on the fuck it decorator on the function, and no longer have trouble. You can also use the context, the fuck it context manager. It works like a normal context manager, but any code inside it will not fail. You can also use the fuck it function to wrap a, a module so that any module you import with it will not fail. And the good news is this software is given to you with the do what the fuck you want to do public license, so you can just do what the fuck you want to do. <laughs> So the next time your PM, your boss, or any coworker comes to you and tells you, oh no, there's a problem in production. Fuck it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that was inspiring, <laughs> truly. <laughs> Thank you for all the work you're doing too, for the good job you're doing. 
Uh, our next speaker, Ricardo, he's, uh, he's going to tell us how uh, to work on Pythagoras theorem, theorem and square root 3 in a second. Okay, um, because uh, Python 3.14 is coming. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm done, I'm done here. With the okay, hi, uh, I'm Ricardo, uh, and today I told you about the square root three and Pythagoras theorem. So, uh, first, uh, uh, we uh, have to know how to draw an equilateral triangle, use Tarto. And we uh, draw a triangle with four cycles, and um, this is other. And um, now we have to know how to draw a triangle, but, uh, uh, but with uh, the height. But um, we don't have to um, do the height because uh, Python uh, computes the height. We give it the formula here. No. Uh, so um, now the Pythagoras theorem. Um, Pythagoras theorem is simple, and um, we have to know but uh, how to draw um, a, a triangle with Pythagoras theorem. So uh, here too we uh, do to Python the formula uh, with uh, import mass and. Uh, the important thing is that uh, we put a four cycle into a four cycle. Uh, now, leave the um, boring thing and uh, we can find two with Tarto. Uh, this is uh, Tarto uh, found with Tarto. And, uh, oh, no, okay. Um, for example, this program um, makes fly Three little birds. Thank you. So turtles are fun. Which one to connect? This one. Are you ready? One second. Okay. Okay. Now that we Point have some end. time, as we wait for him, because you, most of you have been attending EuroPython for the longest time, which country? was the Europe first Asia one America. to host Europe. the very first EuroPython. Country? Yes. I was actually looking for the city in specific. Do you remember? Ah, I can't pronounce that, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> well, he can say it. I can give you the mic to say it. The city. Charleroi in Belgium. Yeah, you try that too. <laughs> okay. So, you see when sometimes you send emails to like a mass of people that you didn't want to send emails to? So that happened, but we'll talk about that. So, Sitar is going to go through presentation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. So it's a presentation. It's a presentation about presentations. And this is Siddharth Gupta. And this is Inception. Sorry, present. Inception. Uh, to start. Sorry, I'm taking a bit of a time because it's a Python conference and not a C++ conference. And I love being here. What a wonderful crowd we have, and what a wonderful volunteer team we have. Please, this is for the volunteer team. Let's give a big round of applause.
So that's the other way to start a presentation. <laughs> Check if they're alive, or at least awake. Stage one, preparation. Know your audience. Know your audience. Truly know your audience. Knows nothing. <laughs> Stage two, this is getting very important now. It's the execution time. Know your topic. At least act like you know your topic. Even if you don't really. Confidence, confidence, Sadat. Okay, maybe know at least a little bit, you know. <laughs> Come on, you are at Europython. At least know how to print Hello World, right? What, what happened there? Uh, assistant, please do a better job now. Have your friends in the audience. So they start clapping. <laughs> subtle hint, subtle hint, subtle hint. Before you finish, and don't forget bullet numbering. <laughs> there is more. There is stage three, the wrap-up part. Respect time. Very important, you know? People sometimes go over time. Volunteers hate it. They won't tell you, but they hate it. They say five minutes, and it's 170 seconds right now, so I took exactly three. I respect our volunteers. Thank you. <laughs> Stage two. <laughs> Wrap up part two. Don't interrupt when they applause. <laughs> Leave before they start asking questions. That was Thank nice. I thought he would say, and then you end the presentation, and then he leaves. <laughs> but that was really nice. So you remember how I was telling you that sometimes you send emails that are not supposed to be for masses, and then it ends up to everybody? So that happened in EuroPython, and the title was really interesting. I don't know if you received the emails, but can you remember the title if you received the email at that point? I could give you a little hint. It has spaghetti. That's the only hint you're getting. But let's see if we meet here tomorrow, and then you can get your answer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Angel and I were hosting the Lightning Talks. You were a lovely audience. I hope to see you tomorrow, and enjoy the rest of your evening.